We were just discussing the theory of liquidity preference, understanding the relationship between money supply and money demand, and how it's brought into equilibrium by the interest rate. And really what we're trying to understand is how that interest rate changes in the economy or how we find an equilibrium interest rate. We said it's obviously where they where supply and demand for money intersect. And specifically when we're talking about money, we're talking about kind of currency or checking accounts, right? We're talking about money that is in its most liquid asset that you can then use to go purchase goods and services. And then we were talking about on the supply side money as a result of Fed action. And we kind of talked about what that would, how the Fed can take action to increase or decrease the money supply. What we want to think through is uh, we said we were going to talk about kind of fiscal policy and monetary policy when it comes to aggregate demand. So what we want to do is understand this in relation to the aggregate demand curve. I'm going to bring this down to give us a little more space. And what we're really going to be looking at now is, so what happens if there's a change in the money supply on monetary policy? And right, if we've talked about, I know we've kind of talked about this before, but when we talk about monetary, when we talk about monetary policy, this is really kind of this is what's happening on the economy as a result of the Federal Reserve, right? So as a result of what's happening with the Federal Reserve or what's happening with money supply. So anytime in economics or or just in the general economy and business you're hearing talk about the monetary policy, we are almost always talking about interest rates, we're talking about the money supply, we're talking about decisions that the Federal Reserve makes that changes kind of the supply of money here. So let's think through what that would look like. We've just talked about how these curves, uh, why they're shaped as they are and kind of what the return on investment would look like. So why we would have a downward sloping curve for money demand. I'm just going to bring this back down here and let's say that we've got money supply as a result of Fed action and obviously we've got kind of money demand here at a given price level, right? So we're kind of holding that constant. On the x-axis, we're looking at quantity of money. In the American case, as a result of Federal Reserve, we'd be looking at dollars here, currency, right? And, uh, and then here on the y-axis, we're looking at the interest rate as well. And what we want to take a look at is, well, so what would happen if the Federal Reserve decided to increase the money supply? And so let's say that the, let's say that the Fed, and I'll just kind of mark this over here, the Federal Reserve Fed decides to increase the money supply. What is the what happens to aggregate demand? So what does this look like here? Well, an increase in the money supply for the reasons we talked about, right? They can be uh, they could be buying bonds uh, that would increase the money supply, and this would increase the money supply from MS over here to let's say money supply two, which I've marked in this orange color. That is obviously going to move us down to this new interest rate. So we go from this previous interest rate right here to a lower interest rate as a result of the increase in the money supply. And as a result, right, as a result of that lower interest rate, we're also seeing a much higher quantity of dollars that would be that would be held, right? Kind of currency that would be readily available. So what does that now look like on the aggregate de like I'm sorry, the aggregate demand and aggregate supply curve. Well, we're really just going to focus in on aggregate demand because we're looking at how monetary policy affects aggregate demand. And if we just kind of draw this out, what do we know? On the y-axis here, we're looking at real output or GDP, right? So I'll mark that as y. And over here, we're looking at the price level on the y-axis, the price level. If you remember, I'd said the money, de uh, the money demand here, we had said that's at a given price level. So what would we be looking at here? And I don't know, I don't want to uh, confuse this. So let's use this gray color here. We would have some sort of aggregate demand, right? At, oh, undo. We would have some sort of aggregate demand here that would be at a given price level for all the reasons, right? Downward sloping relationship between output and price levels for all the reasons we've previously thought of. And now as a result, what would we also see? Well, we've talked about how a lower interest rate would also increase the the aggregate demand curve, right? What it, what are we actually saying here? There's more money to be held. There's more demand that can be currently held. So one of the things we can think about here is that, uh, in essence, there's more money that is out there to be supplied, right? At any given price level being held constant, what are individuals likely to do? Well, they are likely to hold more money, right? They are likely to, 
they are likely to take that money and to purchase more goods and services at any given price level. And so I'll just mark this at kind of in that same color as aggregate demand two, which is going to shift aggregate demand out to the right. It would be a shift of the demand curve to the right. And there's a few things that we can kind of think of here. So kind of in summary, if we're going to think about this, what do we know? Uh, we know that the Federal, the Federal Reserve can target interest rates, right? Because we now know that there's an interest rate relationship. There's a relationship between the interest rate and the money supply. And there's kind of a couple things that they can do to affect aggregate demand. So the first thing they can do is they can increase the money supply. To increase the money supply, the action that they would take, right? They might set some sort of target to lower the interest rate. They can lower the interest rate by increasing the money supply. We know that we can focus on the interest rate because there's an equilibrium there itself. It's a little harder to actually track everything that's going into the money supply. So we typically talk about the interest rate when we talk about Federal Reserve policy. And we know that lowering the interest rate is going to have an increased result, or it's going to have a result of increasing aggregate demand. We'll have a demand shift to the right because there are more dollars to be held that can then be used for consumption. And what do we know with aggregate demand? Some of the things that are that are an important kind of piece of this, right? We know that there's consumption, there's investment, right? There's government expenditures, there's kind of net exports here is the main things that are influencing aggregate demand. And all things held constant, right? If we're just looking at this same price level, if we're looking at this same price level and kind of taking this over, we would be looking at, at that same price level, more money that can be held that you can then spend. So we'd see kind of an increase there on the consumption side as well. Also possibly an, in, an increase on the investment side as well. And we've also know the exact opposite is true as well. So if the if the government, if the, I'm sorry, the Federal Reserve were to decrease the money supply, maybe that's because they've increased, right? They've set a target where they want to increase the interest rate. That would be shifting this to the left, right? Kind of looking at the exact opposite. What's the result that that would have? Well, for all the exact opposite reasons we've talked about this, this would have an this would have a decreased effect on aggregate demand. We would see a shift of aggregate demand to the left because we'd be restricting, right? We'd be taking the money supply out. We'd be increasing the kind of the interest rate there. And we would have this effect of reducing, of kind of shifting the aggregate demand to the left for the same kind of opposite reasons we just talked about on consumption and investment, things of that nature. This relationship here between between the interest rate and the money supply is very important and when we talk about monetary policy these are often interchangeably talked about and the resulting effect on aggregate demand this relationship almost always holds true and we can always think about kind of results uh, or we can think about policy uh, implications that the Federal Reserve might take as a result of things that are happening in the wider economy.